Hi everyone, it's Tori here for the Robin Marie Smith design team and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a mandala inspired art journal page using um, stamps from the Mixed Media Essentials uh, stamp sheet and the Garden Muse stamp sheet as well as some art pops cards and stickers. So I've already jumped into it here but I'm working in a altered book um, journal. This is an old book I picked up from the thrift store. I believe it was about Canadian uh, wilderness or history or something like that. Um, and this is something I did. It was just an old page I had where I had done sort of uh, the ink splot technique where I put some paint down and squished my pages together. I haven't worked in this page in so long, but I thought I would spend some time in it today. So here I'm using just some, I believe it was cobalt turquoise uh, acrylic paint. And what I'm doing is just laying down my background so I have a base for my stamped uh, mandala afterwards. I'm going back in with some Liquitex, uh, sorry, light blue permanent. And then this is some um, Hansa yellow light or light Hansa yellow, however you want to say it. <laughs> and uh, again, I'm just, I wanted this page to um, be really bright and colorful. Um, I'm not going to get too crazy with the background because the mandala will be like fairly intricate. So I don't want the background to overwhelm it too much. But um, as you guys all know, lots of um, Robin Marie's um, like art pop cards and such are quite colorful. They have little hit hints of bright colors here. And I was using the urban fringe ones. So I wanted to um, pull some of the colors out of the cards and put them into my page so that they work together really nice and were cohesive which is why I chose these sort of light blue turquoise and yellows and hot pink. That hot pink I was using is actually by um, Pibio, Pibio? I never know how to pronounce that. Um, but it's their fluorescent pink and it's one of my favorite colors. So again, I'm just painting here. I just stuck a scrap piece of paper over the other page. One, because I was worried I was gonna get um, paint on it, which I already did. And two, just to, I, it, was probably, it was distracting me as I was working. It was hard to focus on just the one page. Um, and so what I'm using here is um, a fluid acrylic by Iron Lock. It's an Australian brand. Uh, the shade is Potion, or yes, it's Potion. So it's sort of a magenta shade. And I'm just spraying it with some water. It's fluid acrylic, so if you've used it before, you know what it is. If not, it's very fluid. Um, but it's what they will use in like airbrushing tools and people will use it to do calligraphy and such. And so it's very, very fluid. And if you ever able to get your hands on some iron lac, it's great. It's very opaque and matte, like very matte, which I like because then my pages don't stick together. I find that if I use other brands, um, I have to go over with matte medium or something to try and make sure the pages don't stick. So I've just run off to my drying station and hit it with my heat gun to try and speed up the process. And you'll notice that I was picking up paint with my paper towel. I sort of didn't mean to do that, but then I really liked the texture it was leaving behind in my half dry paint. And so I just went back and did that again in a couple areas to give it some texture. And now I'm just painting over top of those black splotches and same thing, lifting up extra paint with the paper towel only because I'm going to stamp over top of this and I'm using black ink so I don't want it to get too lost in the black paint. I want it to stand out so I needed to lighten that a bit so that the ink would um, have something to contrast against. So now I think I'm going to go pull out, oh here we go, I've got the Art Pops uh, large circle stickers and so I've decided on one, like I said I'm using the Urban Fringe collection and as you can see there's the pink and the yellow and so I tried to reflect that in my background of my page. And so I'm grabbing an art pops card. I didn't realize this, maybe you didn't notice either, but until I ripped up the card was that I picked the card that had the same section of painting that the circle had. Like they were the same part. <laughs> I subconsciously chose the same thing. So I'm just uh, shredding up a card here. Oh, I, that is not what I meant to use. That was airbrush medium. <laughs> what you actually need is matte medium. So don't use airbrush medium. It does not work very good. <laughs> Um, so I've just decided to uh, tear up this card and shred it a little bit to add some texture in the background. Again, I didn't want to get too wild because I'm going to be stamping on top of it, but I did want a little bit more interest in the background. And the Art Pops cards are great for these. So I'm just, again, using my matte medium like a glue and adding that to my background. 
And if you don't use matte medium, you could also use Mod Podge. You could you could try gluing this down with a glue stick if you wanted to. Um, the uh, art prop cards are quite thick, like they're quite heavy stock. And so I find that things like glue stick um, don't work great with really heavy stock paper. You're better off to use a liquid adhesive in my personal experience. So um, if you have white glue, you could use that. If you have Mod Podge, you could use that. I just use matte medium because it's always out on my desk and easy to get to. So that's why I like to use it. So I think that's the last background piece I'm gonna add here. I'm trying to remember what I did next. <laughs> I never quite, quite remember what I was doing. You know, you kind of get into a creative state and then you sort of relive it once you go back and edit the videos. And so you could do this with any of the uh, Art Pops cards and stamps too. Um, I actually wasn't really sure what I was gonna do for a page and then I found one stamp and for whatever reason, it just really sparked this idea of making a mandala design. And so um, you can see on the screen there, the kind of circle shape that has sort of the pie pieces in the middle, that's the one that sparked it I saw and thought, oh, that really reminds me of the center of a mandala for whatever reason. So I've just pulled out all my stamps. Um, I've cut them all separately from my stamp sheet and I have them all pulled out here just because I wasn't really sure what I was going to use. So I pulled them all out so I could test them all against one another to see what I thought was best. And so you can see here with my stamps, I have like a no-no. I don't have my, these are unmounted rubber stamps and I don't have any, like I didn't mount them on anything and they won't obviously stick to my acrylic block. So I just use some double-sided tape to stick them on there. It's not a great solution because the double-sided tape is or sorry, double-sided tape is terrible to take off, but I didn't have anything else to mount it with. I kind of had, it's on my to-do list to get some like uh, cling foam or whatever, and I hadn't got around to it yet. So this is a good temporary solution. At the time of recording this, I did order myself some uh, cling foam to mount all my rubber stamps. So I can use them with my acrylic uh, block in the appropriate manner. So um, what I did first was I just um, stamped my center stamp and now I'm going through with a smaller kind of circular-ish design and I'm just evenly spacing it around. Instead of like starting and working in like a clockwise or counterclockwise pattern, the best way to kind of make everything even is to start at the top and then to keep working directly across from where you stamped. So, you know, do like top, bottom, left and right, and then fill in the gaps around it. And then I find this way, everything's a little bit more evenly spaced instead of trying to guess it as you're stamping around, if you've put it too close or too far away from one another. I'm doing the same thing with this stamp here, this sort of half dome shape. Same thing I did the top, and now I'm gonna do the bottom, and then I'll do either side. And this just makes it easier because I am notorious for being a poor guess of space and distance on things. So I've tried to teach myself ways to be more successful at not cramming everything, you know, in the last couple inches because I've, you know, miscalculated. So anyways, <laughs> and so like you can see here, I'm just trying to decide, do I like this? Do I like that? I'm going to use that one. Um, that's a stamp from the, I believe it's the Garden Muse. If I remember correctly, it's from the Garden Muse set and this one is from the mixed media essentials one and yeah I'm just gonna keep working through I did not have a plan for this like I said going into it I was just working intuitively as I was building the mandala design I started with the center and just kind of rolled with it which is a great way to work sometimes um, I know other creators are a lot more organized or have like plans I think if you do really detailed work sometimes you really need a you know, a plan, but, um, I find that I work very intuitively and this was a really great way to sort of explore using the stamps in a really intuitive manner. There wasn't really a way to screw it up. It would always work. So, and I'm going to use this cute little stamp here and fill in the gaps between those lines of scribbled circles to further, you know, create my design. So I don't do much mandala drawing. So I guess I guess those maybe who are people who draw mandalas are probably going to say this isn't very mandala-ish, but it reminded me of that. And so I quite liked it. And, you know, as you can see, I'm stamping and I'm making it more intricate. And you can see why I didn't want to make the background too busy, because if I had made it any more busy, it would have been hard to see the lines from the stamps. 
So I've just run off and dried it with my heat gun quickly um, because I'm using um, archival ink, which is great. It's going to be permanent, but I find that on like acrylics, it just takes a while to dry because it's on a non-absorbent surface. So I just ran off and dried it with a heat gun so I could just keep working. And now I'm going back in with my favorite, favorite drawing pen. It's a Faber-Castell uh, 1.5 bullet nib. I love this pen. I buy it when I go to the store. I buy like a handful of them, so I always have them on hand. And I'm just gonna go in and fill in some of those negative spaces with more details to, you know, bring it all together. And I'm gonna try and reflect the design of the stamps. I don't want them to stand out. I wanted them to feel like they were part of the stamp design. So I did everything kind of a little bit scribbly and organic. I didn't want anything that's, you know, stood out too much, if you will. And you could do this if you wanted to. You could totally leave it if you wanted to as well. There's not really right or a wrong way to do this. And you can see, you'll see from here to the rest of the video that every time I go to draw, I'm really hesitant because I'm not quite sure where I want to put stuff, where it's supposed to go. And I'm kind of guessing as I go. And so I've grabbed some gel pens. These are Sakura uh, Moonlight and Souffle gel pens. And they're kind of like neons and the souffle ones dry erase, but I actually end up not using them. I use this hot pink from the Moonlight set, but I don't actually use any of the other ones. I think I originally wanted to add color to it, but then when it came time to do it, I was really like torn. I was like, you can see here, I'm going to hesitate. And I, do, I just decide, you know, I don't know where to add it and I don't want to color everything in. And so instead I grab my favorite white gel pen and I add a little bit of detail that way. I was worried that all the colors would compete with the background. And so even though like, you know, as I was making this, my idea came to fruition and I was like, oh, I'm going to add color and color in some of the areas. I realized I didn't actually want to. And that's the great part about working intuitively is that you're not committed to a plan. You're able to change and be flexible and adapt so that you can, you know, take it in a new direction. You're not tied to a plan. You're not screwing up. You're not you know, failing the plan before you started. So yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> and so I think I'm not sure what I do now. I'm looking for something I can tell. I think I grab, oh yes, this is my favorite um, gold pen. It's uh, the Krylon 18 karat gold liquid gold leaf pen. And it's my favorite, favorite pen. I just, I discovered it a couple weeks ago or about a month ago and I use it on like literally everything right now but it is like the perfect gold pen it's like a true metallic like almost chrome like and so I'm just going in on those uh those four stamp designs big ones and filling in the pie shapes with the gold and then I decide that the gold is a good enough neutral that I can add in some more details with it but it's not going to take away from the really colorful background so I'm just going to go through and add a few more details to it um, it is a chisel tip pen, so it's a little finicky to work with if you're not doing like big broad strokes. I wish they had like a bullet one, but I guess it's meant for, I guess it's meant for like liquid gold leafing other things, probably not drawing with. And so I drew a little flower in the center and then I think I'm going to go back in and do a little bit more detail work with the white pen. I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't sure how much or how little. I almost probably could have left these details out because I don't know if they really added to the page a whole lot. But as I said, I was working intuitively. So, you know, it seemed right at the time. And I mean, it didn't wreck the page. It still looks good, even, even if they're not really like adding to it a whole lot. There, and then I think I decide that I'm done. And then I decide I'm not done. <laughs> and that I actually want to add a detail to that flower in the center because I didn't like that it kind of blended in. So yeah, that's the whole page. Here's my uh, mandala inspired art journal page. I hope you guys found it really, you know, interesting to watch and I hope it sparks an idea for you. And I would love if you guys tried to add your own spin to it and create it with any stamps that you have or even anything else. You could just draw one, you could stamp it, you could stencil it. If you have stencils, you could do that too. So thanks so much for watching you guys. And until next time, I will see you soon. Bye.